At 1 p.m. HST, I know where I will be. Ukulele Underground Podcast for you and me. Aldrin and Erin and Kahai. And maybe Magic Mike or a guest on the fly. Ukulele Underground Podcast. Now here's the guys. Here's the guys. Hey, everyone. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Joining me are Mr. Aaron, the voice. Nakamura, say what's up. Aaron, the voice. What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend. Fergan, say what's up, Kahai. What's up? It is Friday, and it's not a little Friday Live Jam. It is the Ukula on the Ground podcast. What we do here is we answer any and all of your questions, however they may come, via email, via text, via carrier pigeon, via snail mail, or via down the road that's that's good too however we get the questions we try to answer it as best as we can today we 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 are we are one one stronger today <laughs> we have a uh, we have a very very special guest mr matt dalberg hey what's clap, up clap, clap matt how's it going man how are you i'm good how are you not that great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> just, just some, just some stuff that I'm sitting on. <laughs> but, but you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll be just for now. No, I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, things are going really well. It's time but, is just melting by. It's pretty crazy. Right. What, what have you, what have you been up to? Yeah, I'm making lessons on my Patreon page, teaching lots of mm-hmm. private lessons. Uh, nice, you know, and uh, and being a dad, uh, my my kid's in kindergarten and just cool. had his midwinter break the week before last. And, nice, uh, nice. Yeah, it's been uh, it's crazy how this school year is. You know, mm. it's not almost over, but it's like over mm. half over, and oh. I feel like I blinked. <laughs> Winter, what's what's that like? What is what is winter? I've heard I'm of that. Cold. Uh, <laughs> I've heard of winters. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is cold? <laughs> what is snow? What is what is this wet? Now I know wet. Like we, uh, yeah, you we, guys we, know we, wet. Yeah, we, sure. we it rains here all the time and stuff. But you know, but what is what uh, is cold? We, <laughs> like uh, seventy a, degrees. Uh, sixty-nine. Yeah, 65. I guess so. I guess it does get pretty cold in sixty-five. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So. <laughs> It's uh, 42 and raining right now. It snowed is... on a Tuesday uh, and my kid had a late start and I had to cancel a lesson because mm-hmm. he was getting on the bus halfway through. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of work when he's at school. Oh. I was like, man, if your day is canceled, I got a video due today. So, uh, <laughs> Here, hold I, this camera. <laughs> I really hope you're uh, you're ready to watch some PJ masks or something. <laughs> so. Nah, tell him to grab a new Kalele and help out, you know, like earn his keep. <laughs> it probably get more views that way, to be honest. There you, there you go. That's <laughs> People watch that, like anything with, with kids in it and they're opening toys and whatnot. I'm just like surprised by like how many views those things get, man. They're adorable. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have Matt Dahlberg here. He he is an is an expert on the ukulele. He teaches ukulele. He is a uh, world renowned teacher. He has students from all across the globe. Uh, from a bunch of different countries, a bunch of different languages and stuff. So, you know, Matt has has taught thousands, I guess at this point, right? Thousands I, of people. I mean, when yeah, when you include all of the different um avenues and things yeah absolutely as far as like yeah. private lessons i don't know the the number of students but yeah. the nice thing about private lessons is most of my yeah. students have been studying for years you know some are mm-hmm. newer but like uh mm-hmm. one i just we just had our 10 year anniversary of doing <laughs> lessons together which is kind of wild but right um, on, but as far man. as the one-on-one lessons go i i mean it's mm-hmm. it's well over ten thousand lessons given mm-hmm. not to ten thousand different people but yeah uh, that would be that'd be a little overwhelming <laughs> So because the, because this is a and a show, the uh, the A's are just going to be that much better with, you know, with, with, <laughs> with, with four people here than no ukulele. So we, we're going to have four times the A's is uh, that that's what's going to happen today. But you know it's, what I mean? It's 4A like, premium ukulele. There you go. 4A. Four, four <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Kahai, give us our first cue, buddy. We are live. So for those of you folks who are watching this live on YouTube right now, um, you can you can make a comment. So you can ask your questions there on the on the live chat can do that or if you want you know um if you want it to to be sent over to our email we have an email and all that good stuff but if you want to answer today or right now type it in the chat let's go kahai what's the first question uh yeah 
So this one is from Sue, and uh, she said, uh, we have a a question for you and Matt. We recently watched Matt's awesome YouTube video on scale modes. He made it very easy to understand. Thanks, Matt. Our question is, when you're playing a song in a minor key like D minor, do you base your modes off the relative major F scale? Uh, I accept Eldrin's challenge to create a solo for the song we did at last night's open mic, so I need some minor scale help. Thanks. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, what, what do you what do you do, Matt? What do you what do you do? Do you stick a D to stick at D minor, or do you think about the F because it's the major relative? What what yeah. what does what does one do, buddy? So, so I want to preface this with saying I don't like scales. Um, and it's okay if you don't too. If you like them, that's okay too. Did you just um, do I, a whole video on scales? That's I did. what you were just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a long video breaking it down. Well, so the, the ukulele, yeah. especially if you're a high G player like us, it's yeah. it's one of the worst scale instruments, like I think in the world. <laughs> because like, you know, if I asked you to play me a B major scale right now, Aldrin, mm-hmm. yeah. how would you how would you play it? You, you probably would jump up to 11 and just go up there because you, you uh, can. Otherwise you're yeah, jumping yeah. between two strings, right? Right, it's, right. It's a mess, no matter what way you look at it. And yeah. so if we're thinking about um, how we perceive scales, mm. I look at it to the instrument more than the key. So in the case of D minor, D minor is a really friendly key and scale on the ukulele because your D is here. So you're, you're already kind of lower on the fretboard and you're making you know better use of it. So if I'm just playing in D minor here, I will think in D minor. Mm-hmm. However, as I move up the fretboard, I'm going to still be thinking in D minor, but I'll be using those relative modes that share the same notes. So I'm still thinking of that B flat. And as I'm going through, I'm not necessarily going to just jump up to F major and play that. That might be a, something I do, but I also might play my E Dorian scale. I might play, you know, my going up here and getting, oops, not there, you know, and trying to play with my different scales as I go up. So the goal is to be able to find D minor as the center, knowing that's D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, back to D, and then use those different notes as starting points to kind of jump up the fretboard in different ways. Uh, D minor is a friendly one. If I were playing in, let's say, the key of B minor, that's a lot less friendly because where's my first B on a high G? It's all the way up here, right? And so what I'll instead be thinking is the notes of B minor just starting in different points, which can give you different scales mm. and different kind of avenues as you're going through. So it depends less on the key and more to what I'm playing on the ukulele, if that makes sense. It's not so much, will I use my minor with a relative major, mm-hmm. as much as it's, where am I on the uke? Where am I playing? And then find the relative accordingly, if that makes sense. Good answer. Good, good answer. That's spoken like a person who's taught thousands of of people how to play ukulele <laughs> <laughs> well as far as uh, as far as that goes i mean you can you can think of it in in both ways in d minor or as an f um relative major but um i like to you know speaking of uh, speaking of modes i like to kind of just break it down into two two different modes which is almost similar on on the ukulele which is the regular you know like the regular mode from from the uh, from the root note and the uh, the mixolydian mode is is uh, is pretty easy with you know with with that so in this case, we got that with that that F major, you know, relative major and stuff. And uh, and when you're you D down here, I see what you're doing there. So there's that there's that C, you know, yeah. There's that C, which is the mixolydian to the uh, to to the F, and you can kind of think of it that way. So those are my uh, those are my two. I, I call it um, islands or or you know or, or boxes. Like we we talked about this in Solo Seekers Revealed. So the first box would be that five, six, seven, eight, but you can also lower it down to a zero, one, two, three is the second box. And then uh, your your bridge between the two islands, so to speak, is the uh, is the 10th fret, then it repeats again on 12, which is the same thing as that, that zero, one, two, three, okay? So what it, what I mean by that is the um, the mixolydian scale here, uh, mixolydian and F would be C, right? C mixolydian. So um, your normal scale shape, if we were to look at a five as zero, you know, it would be zero, two, zero, one, three, zero, two, three. That's like our scale shape, nice and simple. Instead of thinking of like the notes like F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. Instead of thinking of it that way, I just think of it as 0201302. Now, 
the only difference between that shape and the Mixolydian shape here is the last like last two notes, really, because it's just zero two zero one three zero one three as opposed to zero two three at a red end. So if you're if, regardless if you're going down or you're going up, you have all these you know all these notes to or all these frets that you can choose notes from the uh, from the D minor scale or the F major, which works both ways. You know you have the zero one two three, five six seven eight, ten and 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's that's all those notes. So for example, if I'm gonna be doing a solo, and also make sure to play all the notes in between because that's, that's always fun, right? My favorite part about what you're doing there too, playing the C Mixolydian is you get to approach into the D note from below. Yes. One of the reasons I yes. don't like scales is because you're bookending, <laughs> right? You're you're starting yeah, 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 you're yeah, ending yeah. on yeah. the note. And then yeah. when you're soloing, you're playing with all the space that goes above this D and yeah. below this D. <laughs> but when you're playing that C mixolydian, it's like, yeah. oh hey, this D note, I can go below and into it. And it sounds mm. so much more musical and natural. Mm. And mm. that's where modes can really help is when you sandwich the root, whatever mm. your your core is that you're playing off of, kind of in the middle of the scale, you can do mm. some cool things with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And because uh, and what what I like about that is because our lowest note here is C. So if I am doing a a solo in in D minor, my seven is just right there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can add some really cool like voicings to that. So you're not just always at the you know always at the root as your last you know or as your lowest note. You get a nice little seven as the lowest note before you get to that you know back to your root. Good fun for the people yeah, who fun. understand what we just said. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the real easy breakdown is a, a key is created by a group of notes and then the perspective that you're applying to it. Yeah. So the key of D minor and the key of mm -hmm. F major are the mm -hmm. same collection of notes, but the perspective is different, usually because you're starting and ending on one of the notes or the other. But mm -hmm. you can create the perspective in a different way by maybe you're starting with that note going above and then going below instead of just starting on one going to the next. So yeah. like if uh, we're soloing, let's say, in the key of A minor, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet anything. We, we both love this little pocket. Yeah, yeah. And why do we love it so much? Well, I think it's because the A is smack dab in the middle. Right there, yeah. And we can get, we can go above it and below mm -hmm. it and just kind of keep coming back. Yeah. Doing it here is not as much fun because I can only go down to this a and up yeah. into this A without breaking. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's where, so when you're soloing, try to find a note and where you can go below and above mm -hmm. to create some soloing sounds. Yeah, I like I like how you're like, it's probably because it's right there in the middle. It's, it's just because I played body surfing for like 50 billion years and it's a G minor and I like, mm -hmm. I like that shape. So it's the same thing moved up. Yeah. But like, that's probably so why here, yeah. yeah it's a probably minor. why body surfing is in g minor originally it's so right? fun yeah yeah like yeah, yeah. so 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 fun so fun. all right so hopefully that that answers your question right on man love love what? that love i gotta check out that video that that uh that kristen's you were talking about with the oh, uh with when the i started i was like i wonder how long this will be you know and <laughs> I, I i just started doing it and it yeah. was way longer than i thought mm -hmm. it would be but uh but it, do you it, think it, yeah do you think about like um what to kind of well how do i how do i word this like say there's like uh you're you are in the key of d minor for example mm -hmm. and then like the, the chord progression goes as the chord changes do you like do you revolve around the root of that chord within that of that d minor scale or do you yes you know, so chord tones in general so yeah, it's less yeah. just the root so yeah i, I, um, I didn't want to do the jargon <laughs> oh yeah yeah before so, i so, scare people <laughs> yeah so all, all that that means you know is if, if you're playing a d minor chord in the yeah. key of d minor your D note is kind of the first place to start as your sense of home, but a D minor chord also has an F and an A note in it. And those can also kind of be your senses of home. Um, then let's say it goes to a C chord. Well, my sense of home can now be that C or the E or the G, mm -hmm. but I'm still in D minor. So I'm still playing yeah. my D minor scale. I'm yeah. just focusing now on those new notes. And that's actually where modes usage comes from for other instruments, yeah. right? You know, yeah. if you're playing in a jazz setting, you're going to be using your D minor scale over the D minor chord, your C mixolydian scale over the C7 chord or whatever else as you go yeah. through. Um, and so I do think that, and I think all the chord tones, because 
I'm more of a math brain with this stuff. <laughs> um, and I think that that's, uh, you know, what's cool about that is it can help explain it, but it can slow things down too. And that's where the muscle memory really comes into mm -hmm. play to learn riffs and apply them to different keys so that you can feel it, but you yeah. can also think it too. And I just looked, the video is 29 minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> That's a long YouTube video. This is That's not one take, nothing but scales. <laughs> click record, let's go. But, but it showed, it was C major, and it right. basically just showed how you could play C major up the neck yeah. using all of your different modes going, going through. And so it's the same thing, just giving you the opportunity to play literally all the way up, you know, the fretboard. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. But, uh, what do you do when you're when you're soloing? Is it just music takes you over and you just you just go? Um, yeah, I kind of you know like there's there's this demon inside that wakes up and just like <laughs> takes over and then they'll play and then I actually blank out and then when I wake up I'm like oh, whoa I just cut this guy's head off or whatever. You know? Mine's one of those graphing <laughs> calculators from high school, right? You know, it's like sine <laughs> equals cosine equals you know. 3a 6a 5a use the tritone substitute with yeah. no i'm no no i let the hate take over and then like I let, uh, and then i let the hate do the solo because hate solos are the best solos yeah, i do have to admit they are the best it's, solos uh, it's like you imagine emperor palpatine all right so uh next question next question uh I, I was gonna ask uh, Aaron, what mode do you use when you solo? You know? <laughs> yeah, Aaron, do you, do you th think of chord tones, or you know, do you use mixolydians? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mixolydian. <laughs> All right. I I stay in um, chord playing mode. <laughs> So you, so what you're telling me is you exclusively use chord tones when you're soloing, yeah. and you only play them polyphonically. Yeah. Mm. So at all at the same time, that's, that's some next level stuff right there. <laughs> Just stick to the chord. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of that's a lot. Of, that's very jazzy of, of you. That's, that's some yeah. very strong stuff. Most of the yeah. time, I play all the notes of the chord at the same time. Whoa. <laughs> Not dang. <laughs> Most of it, that's, but that's no. like three or more notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's three, three or more, or more notes, notes, man. Generally, <laughs> so multi talented. <laughs> uh, I was saying, but I was muted in the Zoom call that it's like when Aldrin solos, it's like he has Emperor Palpatine on, like, do it, do it, let the hate do flow. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. <laughs> okay. Do it, uh, Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Want okay. to, to see Matt's face? <laughs> I, I, Anakin, you're breaking my heart. I mean, I literally, like, I literally have Star Wars paraphernalia, like, all over this, this little office. So, uh, is that yeah. Pippin? I, I love, I love him. <laughs> is, is he carrying his special sword that you know you can see the orcs with? Uh, I didn't yeah, sign yeah. up for this. The one that he bought, <laughs> the one he bought in Diagon Alley. I remember that episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So cool. Oh man. So awesome. Love stuff. The the stuff. Space Wars. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right on. Next question, Kai. Let's keep this going. <laughs> okay. Uh. So Karen said my uke has a little warp below the hole. Uh, mm. It has a wood top, and I had not been using it or tending to it for some time. Uh, mm. And she asked, will it ever straighten out? Uh, she does Ooh. now use, like, uh, it sounds like, a, what is it? Uh, uh, humidify. humidify. Yeah, yeah, that's what she said. So, But she asked yeah. if it will ever straighten out. That is a that's a tough call. It depends on like how humid or how non humid the uh, the, the place is. Because if the damage has already been done, it's been if it's say like a year or two years, and that that damage has already been done, it's almost irre irreversible at that point. But if it's like relatively new, maybe it'll go back if you uh, you know if you humidify it. Uh, but but you also have to check like if it's uh, it might be over humidity because that causes that too. So if you're putting a humidifier on something that's too humid, that'll cause the same damage. You want to make sure because uh, if it's too humid, put some like silica gel or take like a bag of silica gel. You, they're they're everywhere. Just just buy a bunch just of buy shrimp, a package shrimp chips, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll just take the silica gel from there. Uh, but that's how you take out moisture or take out humidity. But at this point, like I don't know. I would. I, I mean, I'm not like a. Uh, I'm not a luthier, so I, I wouldn't, and I would have to see, you know, I would have to see the damage to see if that's like reversible or not. But if it's, 
I think it's been if it's been for a long time, I don't know if it's reversible. But if it's been like just a couple months or whatever, then maybe you know there might be a chance that if you humidify it, it might it might go back. But yeah, get it, get it checked out. Maybe go to a go to a music store and see see like an expert or something. Or if there's a local luthier around you, or if there's an ukulele store. So don't just go to any music store. I guess they'll just be like, oh yeah, you should just buy this new one. This this six string ukulele that is GL six maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, I think that's I think that's the best call. Like without seeing it, without you know, without knowing how long all that's. I think that's that's my that's my answer, Matt. Yeah, I, so I'm I don't build ukuleles. I tried once and it <laughs> failed. It was a it was a miserable experience. But um, I've had lots of students have uh, problems with humidity and ukuleles get you know ruined or have problems due to it. Generally speaking, when a uke is too dry, the wood shrinks, and when a uke is overhumidified, it tends to swell. So when when you notice like a dip happen, more often than not, that's due to a lack of humidity. But I've, you know, again, not a builder here. And, um, and so I've had students have that happen where it sort of dips below and, um, they have fixed it again. Like Al Aldrin said, you know, if it's been years, you're probably out of luck. Um, but I, I've had a few students who developed really bad buzzes on their ukes and were recommended by luthiers to basically take their ukuleles and put them in a big, like Tupperware tub type thing, like a big, you know, plastic tub. And to put it in there, um, basically with a bunch of like wet sponges around it. Now, don't have the uke touching the wet sponges, please. That would be very, <laughs> very bad. Put the uke in something that will protect it, maybe a smaller bin or whatever mm -hmm. else. But they basically put it in a tub with water and sealed it off for a few weeks, which is not a good idea for a uke that's properly humidified, but for one that's very, very dry, kind of helps reinvigorate it, re-moisturize yeah. it. Um, and in both of the situations with students with that, the buzz completely went away and then they started using uh, humidifying packs to then mm -hmm. help with it. So I would you know, recommend, just as Aldrin said, make sure you know if it's too dry or too, too wet. Um, if you're mainland US and you're not in Florida, odds are very good, y y it's too dry. Um, okay. Even where I live here in Seattle, um, my upstairs usually never goes below 40%, but down here, uh, my studio, it's currently 31% humidity, which is way too low, which is why this thing goes in a case with, with a bunch of humidifier packs um, to make sure it's, it's okay. So if you're anything like me with that, uh, it's probably dry and you can try to rehumidify it, see what happens. <laughs> Worst case scenario, nothing happens. Best case scenario, your uke is fixed. And, and on that note, I highly recommend, do I have one here? Um, there are these things called Bovida packs. They're really awesome. Um, if anyone's Belvita. heard of them. I've heard of Velveeta. Yeah. <laughs> Here my, my case. Prove that I am humidifying my uke. All right. So in my case, I've got these humidity packs. So this is uh, inside of here are these little two-way humidity packs that hold something at a certain percentage, in this case, 49%, which is really an ideal number for instruments. It's all gel feeling. If it gets crunchy, it means that it's too dry uh, and you need to replace it. Um, and so I use three of these packs in the case just to make sure this one kind of goes over the sound hole. Um, and uh, that helps immensely. Uh, now I don't have to worry. And when I take my uke out of the case, if the packs are crunchy, I know, hey, it's too dry uh, for for the uke, and I need to get some new ones. So, not sponsored, but Bovida, I mean, <laughs> you're listening. I, uh, yeah. yeah, Joe Souza, if you're listening, this kid takes care of his ukuleles. <laughs> <laughs> One, right of on. One of these One of these Kanye artists do <laughs> takes care of his ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> All I've, right, had, I've had many problems with ukes though because before <laughs> taking care of the problems so mm. you're not alone if you're pro having mm. problems uh mm. but yeah yeah uh, I'll, that, that helps <laughs> what i'll have I you have... know that i put my ukulele back in the case once every year <laughs> or two <laughs> <laughs> my uke's in the swimming pool right now getting hydrated <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, please don't, please don't. Do no, that. no, don't do that. It's just a joke. Yeah. We have to make sure that people yeah, know that. Chlorine I was just in kidding. swimming pools. If it's a pond, maybe you. Can... <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, actually, um, I, I, I think a lot of ukuleles have like a slight bow in mm. them around, you know, around where mm. the bridge is, or so, so like it, it kind of depends on like 
how dramatic it is, right? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and if it is actually affecting your your action or like causing string budge, buzz, buzz. Yeah. Cause like I've had ukuleles that were like slightly bowed and they sounded fantastic. So, <laughs> you know, if it's not broken, then yeah, then you don't really need to fix it. Like try to, try to aim for like the ideal humidity, but if it's not affecting your playing and it's not affecting the sound of the ukulele, then it's actually pretty fine. Yeah. Like I've, you know, I think like I've, I've had ukuleles that have like a slight bow to the, the top mm-hmm. and they actually sounded better than when they didn't have the bow <laughs> you know it it yeah. almost it it kind of is an indication that like whoever was building the ukulele was building it slightly on the edge of what mm-hmm. you know like the, thin, the thinness yeah, yeah yeah so like a, a thinner of course like yeah. a thinner top is gonna resonate a little more than like one that's overbuilt thicker you know, and so the it's always like the luthier's job to like find that line where they can they can make it thin, where it like resonates and like has the the tone of the wood, but not too thick where it like you know deadens it. Mm-hmm. And so like yeah, I think every ukulele has that to some degree, but as as long as it's not affecting your playing or the sound of the ukulele, then mm-hmm. I think yeah, it's and check fine. the intonation too. Sometimes yeah, the intonation that's the. Yeah. The biggest problem I've seen with with that type, what, or what I should say, is when it becomes a big problem is when <laughs> intonation goes bad. Yeah, yeah. All right, hi. Next question. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a similar question. Uh, so it's Uking Lady. Uh, they asked if I get my frets dressed in the winter, will it be a problem in the summer when it's humid and hot, or should I wait till the summer to get my, the frets dressed? Mm, yeah i think same you know what i mean like if you're properly humidifying your instrument it shouldn't really matter when you you know when you do it um have i would invest in a like a cheap hygrometer just to make sure that that it is a good you know um humidity level inside your case or in the house or in the room that you're you're keeping it in so just to make sure and if you're if you're taking care of it that way it shouldn't matter if you're doing it in the winter or in the summer yeah matt yeah Totally. If, if you're properly humidifying, then it won't matter when you do it. If you're not properly humidifying, it can make a huge difference. And that's where big yeah, problems yeah. can occur. Um, yep. You know, when, when I, before I was properly humidifying my, mm-hmm. my ukuleles, um, whenever I'd bring my uke somewhere, uh, mm-hmm. people would always be like, man, your frets are so sharp. And it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> well, they were doing that because the wood's drying out and the frets yeah. are sticking yeah. out. And so if i were to you know get something worked on in that way and Mm -hmm. then get it properly humidified you can have problems with the wood now swelling and so um, but yeah if you're properly properly humidified doesn't matter Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) i freaked out like my first uh, my first tour and stuff because we did like san francisco we did like kind of colder areas than than it is in hawaii you know and um san francisco colder (laughs) (laughs) you're like next to the water buddy (laughs) it's like at least 50 there (laughs) <laughs> I never so seen a thermometer 60, cold. It reached that like low. sixty, uh, fifty-seven. I've seen it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> so well, uh, we were we were Frisco, and it was kind of cold. And uh, I've never, uh, I mean, I've left I've left the state maybe once before then, and and I, I did a full tour. And um, I remember my my fingers, like my my ring finger, my 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 middle finger, they were just getting eaten up and stuff. I'm just like, is there like a roach problem in this hotel room? With, like, what's going? Something like where I was eating like, my finger. Yeah, I'm like, I know I eat a lot of candy and stuff. Like, maybe I just haven't washed my hands. I wash my hands all the time. But why why are the roaches or ants or whatever it may be or centipedes are eating my hands? Like, it's just it was it was deteriorating and it was it was kind of upsetting and then um and i think one of the one of the gigs i felt around i'm like oh no like this is like like it's pretty bad like the um the the frets were wearing down my fingers and i remember like towards the end of that tour like i was kind of bleed like my fingers were bleeding because it was like it was so bad and uh yeah so i i bled for you san francisco hope hope you enjoyed it (laughs) (laughs) berkeley We bled yeah. for you, Ukula on the ground. <laughs> did, did Mike De Silva do a special Aldrin Blood edition? Of the <laughs> uh, it was. It was on my. I remember I was playing a Kamaka, so you know Kamakas. Mar- was that was that Mary yeah. Jane? That you that was that, no, that Mary Jane is uh, is my first Kanilea. Oh, that it is. Kamaka That's right. 
Mika, the Kamaka. That's right. I'm... <laughs> well, <laughs> oh jeez, I'll just see myself out. <laughs> it was only like 13 years ago. <laughs> Oh man! So yeah, I, I remember like freaking out at the hotel. I'm like, is there like a roach thing that's happening? You know, like I tend to like I don't know, bring my snacks. I had like a bag of M and M's. I think next to my, like next to my bed. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, is this like an ad thing, a roach thing? Like it's just eating my my fingers away. Like what's like I'm not not gonna bring snacks on on my bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Um, this yes, is a father you... of two, I'd like to add, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Some woman gave me two children. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you properly humidify it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't really make a, you know, shouldn't make a difference. But if, if you don't humidify it, I guess regardless if you do it um, winter or summer, the opposite is, is coming. So, it, you know, sooner or later, the opposite is going to come and you're going to feel the difference. Of when, whether you should have done it or sh you shouldn't have. I, I, my main advice: keep it nice and humidified. Yeah, yeah. and I think if uh, Karen is is like properly humidifying it now, uh, mm -hmm. she might not see effects right away. Like Matt said, oh, right? Like you gotta yeah. leave it for like a few days at the least. But even our friend Mike, he says like uh, it'll take like a couple weeks for an mm -hmm. instrument to acclimate to your climate and humidity. Yeah. So, um, you yeah. you. Like you, if you're expecting it to just change right away, it's not gonna happen. And just keep an eye on it. Yeah. I have the what, same. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I have the same problem with with working out. I'm like, I thought like <laughs> if I just work out once, and then I'll see the results like right away. <laughs> but I don't know. Aaron does it, and look look at him. He looks great. You know, I tried to do it, and never worked. So exercise doesn't work, everybody. <laughs> uh, it, it it might be uh, like, and I'm the same way. I'm saying uh, it might be. It might be the candy, buddy. Like if me and you, we are candy eaters, and Aaron is the only one who's eating a salad every single day. So, yeah. totally Just, not the exercise. <laughs> no, no, not the marathon running. No, no. Yeah, no, not not that. You know, like maybe my back would be a lot stronger. <laughs> And what were you saying, Matt? <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, you know, sometimes people get a new ukulele and they're all excited yeah. about it. They play it and it's amazing. Yeah. And then like a week later, it starts buzzing like crazy. And they're like, uh... what? No, what happened? It's just, <laughs> it's dry where you are. Yeah. More more often than not, it's because of yeah. dryness uh, that the buzz starts. And mm -hmm. and then, you know, the, the panic ensues. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, it took a couple of weeks for that buzz to develop. It's going to take a yeah. few weeks for that buzz to go away when you start to properly humidify yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so... It's just, uh, yeah, the, the instrument acclimating to its environment. Yeah. Good, good, good. So uh, speaking of which, Matt is here, and uh, he's actually been been um, involved with ukulele on the ground all the way since, you know, since the beginning. You're like a forum member. You're like, you know. I still remember the day discovering the, the, the site. I was I was uh, waiting at a doctor's wow. office on my first <laughs> iPhone, like the first Whoa. edition iPhone, like, you know, the OG Whoa. iPhone. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Out? Like 2008, <laughs> right? I was like, I'm on the internet right now, right? <laughs> and the dentist's office. And, <laughs> like, screw you, then, highlights. <laughs> I always Google ukulele because there's so little out there. There's so little. And then one day you guys just popped up and it was like, yeah. what is this? And, you know, it was just, this is everything I've been looking for. And so, um, so yeah. Like whenever, a groundhog whenever, whenever, from <laughs> underground, the ukulele underground. <laughs> So that was like 2008 or nine. I mean, it was a it was a long time ago. Yeah, we started in well, the forum started in 07. I, I believe like November or December of 07. But yeah, 08 was when we were like when we launched the the videos, the first you know the first lessons and stuff. And you were you were pretty much there. Like you're you're one of the OG like ukulele underground members. And you know like you're you're somebody who remembers dominator tabs that's like oh. kind of how how i you know how i uh, i base people now like do you know dominator tabs like who's what's a dominator i'm like yeah never mind then run along what was that could we call you a knight of the old republic matt <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, man. I, I won't be opposed to this new title. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> now, let, let the hate flow. Let the hate flow, Matt. Do it. <laughs> ah, Dumbledore. Such, such a great character. Yeah, yeah, such yeah. a great character. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like how we're we're optionally choosing to quote the the dark side of the movies. The, the best <laughs> part is I, I literally just picked up that. Well, my wife picked it up and you know yeah. brought it down. I just bought a new you know Star Wars trading card or deck building game. So yeah. uh, you know, like, <laughs> that's cool. That's I, what I, I'm have, gonna do after this. I have a guy right here with with his Jedi clothes on. Right, I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is he was his OG Grogu. So, well, but Suki made me this. Oh, oh, that, gets, oh okay. that gets bonus points. Special, right? special. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kahai was next to me when I bought this. Also, <laughs> Aldrin, just for you, uh, I do, I do, in fact, have have uh, these Star Wars playing cards. Oh, here. Wow. Wow. Theory Eleven, baby. There we go. <laughs> there, Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's Charlie A cut. Ooh, wow. Smooth. Smooth. I'm so glad I didn't mess that up. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Matt, you've been you've been with us for a long time. You've actually done some uh, some really cool like videos, you know, with with us and for us and like and um I love the crossover stuff. What was the first thing that you worked on with us? It was like a rhythm strumming course, well, right? The, so the first thing I ever did with you guys was way back at the NAM show in like <laughs> 2010, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I I did a couple of Uke minute episodes where I that's taught, right. Uh, that's right. I don't even remember what the techniques were, but I taught something <laughs> from the Lanakai booth. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and so, yeah. And then um, in 2016, when, um, so my wife was pregnant with uh, my son and mm -hmm. uh, Ryan uh, reached out and said, hey, we're gonna be doing this like marketplace thing. Do you, you wanna do a course uh, for mm -hmm. us? I was like, yes, absolutely. Okay. What do you want? And he's like, what do you wanna do? And so mm -hmm. I did a course on strumming, teaching mm -hmm. strumming techniques and teaching kind of a, a verbiage, uh, like a language mm -hmm. using patterns that you can manipulate and change mm -hmm. and show how it's, it's a lot like learning a language, right? When you're yeah. learning to strum, you got to learn the vocabulary and then use the vocabulary and yeah. use it creatively and whatever else. So I know the vocabulary, Matt. I you know, know island strums, okay? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's more it's more being able to know that there's that sense of pulse that continues, yeah. right? No yeah. such thing as two downstrokes in a row, right? It doesn't exist. You have to bring your hand up in between. Unless you're playing a double neck ukulele, that, that could be kind of cool, but... Now I'm getting off base. Uh, and so we called it the ultimate ukulele strumming course. Um, it's actually, it's you can find it on my website now at mattukulele.com. Um, and uh, it just teaches strumming the way that I needed it broken down as a you know person mm -hmm. with no sense of natural rhythm. Mm -hmm. It was a really helpful way and I use it a lot in my private teaching and all that. So, nice. um, so we did that back in 2016. Um, yeah. And then at that same time, we started doing a thing called webcam sessions which mm. was a uh, fun, which I just found out from Kahai, we did 79 of them, um, oh. which is insane. Uh, oh. And uh, it, those are just these little unscripted videos where I talk about things mm. that um, are common questions I get in private lessons and all that. Yeah. And it was surreal because I'd send it, I'd you know send the video to Aaron and he'd make it look beautiful and do all these like, <laughs> vi you know, edits for these cool things like the hashtag salad lovers, still my favorite moment. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 they'd go up and it was like whoa this is this is cool and so we did stuff like that uh for a while and we did some you know live stream things i did a, mm -hmm. i think a couple of uh live lessons for you guys and things mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um and then uh most recently we we mm -hmm. just did something new together um that was yeah. a ton of fun so you know i, I saw how that thing came out it's like this is this aaron did this <laughs> like we didn't like outsource this out because this this looks like this looks like aaron like there's like five aarons like did this did this video right <laughs> I, I'm it's the coolest thing I've ever been a part of like cr crafted wise uh, Aaron just knocked it out of the park with the video edits with this so what what we did was a uh, how to unlock chord melody ukulele playing is, is basically mm -hmm. what it's called and you know the most common question I get as a teacher mm -hmm. is how can I play chord melody and another uh, synonym for that is solo mm -hmm. instrumentals like how, how can yeah, I play yeah, like yeah. Jake or Aldrin you know that type mm -hmm. of style where it's just all this sound coming from an ukulele right. and and so this course is designed to kind of teach you what chord melody is and then mm -hmm. how to create your own chord melody arrangements using sheet music and it teaches you how mm -hmm. to i wouldn't say so much how to read music as much as how to use your decoder ring to to, to equate the music it's a lot more fun yeah. than yeah. uh just reading music we've got this like chart that you look at at least i think it's fun and uh mm -hmm. 
And from there, we work on four different songs with Amazing Grace, Waltzing Matilda, Five Foot Two, or uh, uh, Ain't She Sweet? No, that's not what it's called. Five Foot Two, <laughs> Eyes of Blue, whatever the name of that song is. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, House of the Rising Sun and kind of take you mm -hmm. through that that sort of process. And what's cool about that for the full circleness is that you mentioned the Dominator tabs, right? And yeah. Dominator's tabs were all like Jake arrangements or other songs tabbed mm -hmm. out. And like, mm -hmm. that was my original like Bible as an ukulele player, <laughs> because it was like, oh, this is how I can play that <laughs> style that Aldrin right. and Jake and others do. And learning from your guys' videos and mm -hmm. learning from his tabs was just like, that's what I want. And then mm -hmm. as I got better, I started doing my own arrangements. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this course is designed to help you know, everyone watching be able to do their own arrangements. And yeah. it's it's not as hard as you might think to get started with it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so much fun is it's it's approachable and then you yeah. make it your own. And yeah. It's a, yeah, I, you know, I, I enjoy perusing the uh, the 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 interwebs on on social meds and um, and on the on social media, I always see a lot of like, you know, a, a lot of the ukulele players nowadays are like, this is like uh, this song finger style or whatever, you know, and this song finger style. So like some of my favorites, like uh, Jiggy with Viggy does some stuff like Sammy Turton does some cool stuff. Brittany Pivel, who we had the past few weeks, um, you know, she she does a lot of really cool finger style arrangement. And really what Matt is talking about is doing whatever those guys are doing, but like simple like made made easy but it but it doesn't sound easy it sounds like a full arrangement i've seen the videos and i've seen the decoder ring that that, that matt is talking about so if you want to do finger style that's like that's the that's the cool it's such word a funny that, word i know it's a cool what word that all the kids are using now <clears throat> what does finger style really mean yeah it's, you know, it's like... styling with your fingers buddy <laughs> isn't so that I... all of playing <laughs> <laughs> I use a pixer. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many different ways to play yeah. chord melody too. So finger style is usually yeah. referring to more finger picking type of style, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and and the ukulele, one of the flexibilities of it is you can you can strum chord melody and yeah. look at like Jake Shimabukuro's arrangement of While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Yes. If that yes. didn't have any strumming, you know, it'd still be amazing, but it wouldn't be the, mm -hmm. the like gold standard. Oh my God, you can do that on an ukulele. And yeah. And so this chord melody course uh, teaches you how to do finger style with thumb picking, mm -hmm. with finger picking, and then yeah. also with some strumming so that you yeah. can start to work on those different techniques. Yeah. You know, like you, you can just strum and sing songs and stuff, but you know, if you want to get, get better, if you want to, if you want to be like, like a mine, really most definitely that. <laughs> if you want to get to the next level like matt is you know then uh then yeah you want to start to arrange your own finger style solo ukulele chord melody whatever you you know whatever you name it that's solo that's virtuosic how you, instrumental there you go uh, that's that's how you do it arrangements. you're like man i really like this song you know xyz like how do i play the song xyz i i i found i went online and said like oh how do you play xyz it's an instrumental i found the sheet music what do i do i can't i can't read sheet music what do i do with this like it's just a bunch of dots on a piece of paper so that's exactly ring. what this is for yeah it's <laughs> literal that's exactly what we do is you know teach how to take a piece of sheet music and turn it into something else mm -hmm. and it's funny because like, uh, you know, for you and I are, are really different with how we communicate with music, which is what makes yeah. it so cool and so much fun mm. to talk to you, because like when you do your arrangements, um, wh whatever it might be, uh, is your process, you know, basically just uh, listening to the song and then you know, working it out and, and playing it through ear and, you know, uh, or do you go find a, a chart and, you know, work off of that? Is it kind of a mix? Is It, it depends. You know? I mean, like, uh, for the most part, I, I just use my ear. Like if, if, uh, if it's just a quick arranging thing that, that, that I have to do, it's definitely just by ear. But if it's like a um, relatively complicated arrangement or if there's a voicing that I don't quite like, I'm like, oh man, there's like a chord in between. There's like a passing chord between this chord and that chord. Like, what is that? And is it, it just doesn't seven, sound, it yeah, man. it doesn't just doesn't sound the same without playing that passing chord there. So I will like look at some kind of chart like, ah, that that's what that is, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's not just F and B flat. It's like F and F7 to B flat. Oh, what is something even that, yeah. that simple? Sometimes like, you know, it just kind of escapes you, you know? So, um, <clears throat> nice five of four progression. Yeah, yeah, five and, you know, and then like, I would, I would look it up 
And that's kind of how I would like, okay, well, now I have to somehow work, you know, work that in. So there is like a, you know, a process of like, okay, I can learn these songs by ear, but in, in order for me to make sure that all the chords, all the notes are right, because it's 2023 and people will call you out if you don't play <laughs> something correctly, you know, then, uh, then yeah, I will go and make sure that I'm playing correctly before Abe Lagrimas goes in my videos and goes, Fake and wrong, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Shout oh, out to boy. Abe. Yeah. Oh, Abe's <laughs> unbelievable. Check out Abe. Oh man. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and so for for me, it's it's all music. You know, mm -hmm. I try to use my ear uh, when I can, but I I don't have a great ear. It was not mm -hmm. something that was sort of. Every, everyone's got different kind of natural, you know, talents. Uh, I hate mm -hmm. that word, but it, it's it's true. Uh, in fact, a real quick story that I tell all my students whenever they're like, you know, they think, oh, I could never be as good as you because you've got whatever talent or, or whatever else is. I tell them uh, the story about me and my brothers when we were all babies at our respective time. So I've got two younger brothers. Uh, my mom would sing to us as kids, as babies, and we'd sing along with her as, you know, kids and moms do and all that. And uh, when I was a baby and she'd go out of my range, I'd just belt it out and, you know, that's, that's, it would be out of tune or whatever. With <laughs> both of my younger brothers at the same age that I was at the time, respectively, they would jump the octave either up or down to fit in pitch with my mom when singing along with her. And so when we were kids growing up, like even though my brothers were younger than me, they were always better at music than I was because they, they could just kind of hear things I couldn't quite hear. And when my mom told me that story, I became obsessed and enthralled with like, can I learn this skill? Like what, 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 what happened here? What did I, what DNA did I miss out on, you know, to do this? So I studied music and I never really developed that skill to the way they did as babies, but I learned ways to to work it ways to be able to pull it off and be able to communicate those concepts to other people and to myself and so um, both of them are still incredible musicians one of them runs a, a high school show band and the other uh is a, a pastor and uses it uh with, within mm -hmm. all sorts of things he works with and so but for me that's why i love teaching is because I get to talk to other people like me that maybe were those babies that were out of tune trying to sing with their moms. <laughs> and the way that I teach is, is the way that worked for me to help with that. Um, mm. But now to this day, I still, you know, if, if you played something for me and had me figure out by ear, I probably could do it because it's on an ukulele. But if you just mm. sent like some random pop song with yeah. instruments that I'm not familiar with, and you said, Matt, figure this out, it's gonna mm. take me a lot longer to learn or to figure out just because of that but give me the chart and that's where the music theory and training comes off uh, mm. to be able to facilitate it and that's what the course is about is how somebody who doesn't hear anything can <laughs> use these tools to play something that sounds really good mm. and if you can hear it too just like you said looking mm. at the chart being able to use that as the tool this mm. is like that just little extra to take it to the next level so nice it's like you know how much you love math let's mix it with music <laughs> <laughs> Nah, if I mean everything is math, music is math, honestly, you know, it like is. it's, I mean, it's, we're, we're counting one, two, three, four, like a constant, one, two, three, or whatever the count is, you know, and that's why math rock exists, because like math is, uh, music is, is math. Right. And um, and I think this is a great way to for, for people to kind of not just dip their toes in the water, but really immerse themselves in uh, in, in finger style and solo ukulele and chord melodies, whatever you want to you know, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, sooner or later, you're, you're going to just want to sit down and play melody lines on your on your ukulele you know, you're gonna be like oh well you know i just came home from like from ukulele club that's like three hours of singing or whatever i just want to kick back relax and enjoy my my ukulele and that's when you want to just you know play a nice simple chord melody kind of song and that that's you know this is the course to uh, to to do where the where can they find this now they can find it on on ukulele underground on the uh on the uu mm -hmm. shop shop.uu.ukuleleunderground.com yeah. yeah you you shop and uh, i mean it's, it's been there a while but you know like uh where can they find you also if they you know they're like matt you know i i, I watched your course and stuff but like i need uh i've got questions a through z or whatever yeah. how do i how do i ask you these questions how do i take lessons from you like how do i do that 
Yeah, so the, uh, the the best way to find me is on my website, which is a really original, crazy name of mattukulele.com. Um, nice. Classic. Uh, re- yeah. Classic. Uh, <laughs> it's not ukulelematt.com, though. So, you know, uh-huh. at least I flipped the... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you yeah. kill Ellie, Matt, you know? It's... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So mattukulele.com. All my stuff is there, including, like, you can find... Uh, the course we just did, it'll link you into the UU shop mm-hmm. from my website there. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have that ultimate ukulele strumming course available on my website as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but really the, the the best way to like get in contact with me and lessons and all of that is with my Patreon page. Um, I've got a Patreon page. It's If you go on patreon.com slash mad ukulele, it'll pop up or it'll be a, you can find it from my website too. But mm-hmm. I do a tutorial every month there um, based on mm-hmm. suggestions and votes of the mm-hmm. members. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then I also have like that ukulele underground or U- ultimate ukulele strumming course streaming on that platform as well for members. And you can message me on there. Nice. I try to respond to every message I get. And uh, it's fun to see what people want to learn for different tutorials. Mm-hmm. This month, mm-hmm. we just did a Travis picking uh, nice. thing, which what does Travis picking mean, Aldrin? What I, is I it? Now. What, what is it? What is it? So, so <laughs> Travis picking. Developed by Merle Travis, a guitarist, is basically creating a, a almost a duet effect with one by having the thumb alternate playing bass notes while the other mm. fingers play treble notes, which could be chords or in the case of how I teach in the video, melody. So you're alternating mm. the thumb with playing kind of a bass part and nice. then the other finger is playing melody line. So we use the tune Waltzing Matilda to teach that. Um, and it, it actually came out really fun and yeah. ties into the chord melody course because it's the same key as what I did the chord melody course. So do you want to do, do you want to show us a sample? Do you want to uh, sure. you, you want to play? Do you yeah, want to play that? No, why don't you grab your you can play yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love I'd love to see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm putting like on the spot <laughs> a whole couple days. Yeah, one day. uh, as you're grabbing a tab, can we ask a question too? Sure, because uh, yeah, you sure, have something sure. related to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Andre asks, uh, let me grab it. Sorry. Uh, where is it? Oh, uh, are there tips on notation programs to note down your own compositions, uh, both as notes and as tablature? Matt, what do you use, buddy? Yeah, I use Guitar Pro 8. Um, it's a pretty, uh, I don't recommend it off the get for a lot of people because it, it it's a very um, complex program overall. Mm-hmm. It, and that, that's a good thing because it allows you to do anything you want it to, but it can be very overwhelming for a beginner mm-hmm. to open it up and look at it like, mm-hmm. wait, what? Um, <laughs> the thing I actually recommend most for people that are just starting to work out their own arrangements and things mm-hmm. is do it by hand. Doing it by hand really gives you the confidence yeah. of what you're doing. You're not fighting a program. And if you can comfortably do something by hand and you get to the point where now you feel limited by what you can do by hand and you need something else, you're Mm -hmm. kind of ready for those applications. The applications Mm -hmm. don't make it easier. They give you more opportunity. So, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, try it by just blank tab Mm -hmm. with with sheet music, you know, copying things by hand and then Guitar Pro is fantastic. Yeah, they sell like the uh, the sheet music paper and stuff like just empty, you know, empty sheet music paper. Uh, good thing you answered that because I was going to say Sibelius or like Finale or something. That's what I've worked with since high school. So I don't know any other programs other than those two programs. Yeah, they, they're great for <laughs> for studying music theory uh, for ukulele a little less. So all the tabs like on my Patreon page on uh, all that, they're all created in Guitar Pro. Um, mm-hmm. And so like this Waltzing Matilda thing, which... You know, I, I ha- basically sounds like this for a. Oh, what is it? Right. So what's happening here is I'm doing this and switching the chords. And with that, I'm playing and putting it together. So the video that I just did breaks down each one of those parts individually, even like color codes them for when you're looking at, all of this is free on YouTube, you can see it. Nice, um, nice. And uh, you know, you can learn that song on the uh, on on the um, what's it called the, the the chord melody course. Chord melody yeah. course, yeah, and yeah, so yeah, with, yeah. 
with that, I don't do Travis picking. I just do normal finger picking. So it doesn't mm. have that same revolving door effect yeah. with the the thumb. And yeah. and that ends up sounding, you know, really nice too in a, in a different way. And, and that's, again, why I love chord melody and arranging and all that. There's mm. so many different ways you can do it. And so with the, the waltzing Matilda from the from the uh, course that we did together, let me pull open the tab. That's that's a, a familiar thing for my students to hear. Let me pull open the tab. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, that might sound something like uh, like this going with a. So it's got a little bit more chords, but a little less regularity with that bass line. Um, and you could even play it even more simply of just like. That's more of the thumb, right? You could even try it. Yeah. Right, there's all these different ways that you can approach it. And, and that's what's kind of being taught um, within the chorus and all that. It all starts with the same left hand stuff mm -hmm. though, or fretting hand stuff um, and uh, yeah. You're like some kind of good uke player. You're like some kind of amazing. I learned from the best. <laughs> I learned from the best. Aldrin yeah. has been Kahai an has amazing been. <laughs> teacher for me for years. I took private lessons with Aldrin for a short while. Not long yeah. enough, but uh, yeah, it's uh, the I times were when when I wasn't late is I was a, <laughs> I was a pretty good teacher. I think you know. <laughs> so um, with the well, let, let's do one more question maybe. Okay, so what is Oh, wait, wait, there actually was one more question oh, from okay, the okay, chat. Okay, 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 sorry. Yes. I gotta know what this Aldrin question, question is after this. <laughs> yeah. so. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, so going back to, uh, because you did that strumming course, there was one that was about the island strum. Like, I, I know we, we yes. kind of referenced it too. So like, they were saying that they, um, they use the island strum and that's, that's typically like goes, for, goes on for one measure. Yeah. And so what happens, like, how do you adapt that when you have chord changes within the measure? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, so, so, uh, the strumming course I did, so there's, there's four modules. <laughs> there's basic strumming, not so basic strumming, uh, ghost note strumming, and then like jazz and swing strumming. Um, now this falls into the not so basic and we just called it not so basic very simply because started in implementing different techniques as you go through. So like the island pattern that I teach in the course uses this nice little, you know, single note strum of like the G string and using chunking as well. So you get that sort of, that sort of sound with it, right? So it's, it's not quite the, uh, you know, the, which is a calypso pattern, I usually call it, which there is the not so basic calypso pattern, but that, that's neither here nor there. Um, when, what the question is, is, you know, when you're doing a pattern, how do you switch in between? And more often than not, what I do is I will alter the rhythm a little bit to allow that chord change to be featured a bit more if it calls for it. Sometimes you're going to notice that you'll be doing a pattern like, let's say it's as simple as you're down, down, up, up, down, up. And maybe you have a chord change exists halfway be between. Well, this is where if you know kind of the terminology of, you know, being able to play a pattern that's maybe like down, down, up being two beats instead of four, maybe I do that for two beats and then the next chord and I go back. So that might be something like this. And what's great about this is it sounds so much better than if I'm just holding the same pattern and kind of trying to play that that uh, new chord kind of in a random place. Like, I don't like this sound as much as I do that one because it creates just that variety. But every song's different, every situation's different, and that's where learning different patterns to be able to find the, the word for the, the phrase helps. And that's where I like it, where it's like a language. You learn more words and you use the best word to communicate what you're feeling. In this case, you learn lots of rhythms and use the best rhythm to communicate what you want in the song. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Good so like in, in that case, you sort of just repeated the first half of the strum. 
uh in it it, it works yeah. out that way for yeah. sure yeah and and you absolutely can think of it that way you can also look at other patterns that maybe are more two beat driven two instead beats. of four <laughs> and then yeah. use those and repeat them um and you know as long as your hand is moving down and up consistently it it almost doesn't matter when you're striking the strings and when you're not yeah. for if you're correct or not right mm. um it, if you hit the strings moving down when you meant to miss, it actually sounds good when you do that yeah. every once in a while. Yeah. That that variation is nice. Yeah. It's sort of like speaking. If if they gave me a script before we started this podcast and I had to sit here and read every word exactly that way, it wouldn't go as well, right? But at mm -hmm. the same time, I am using vocabulary, hopefully mostly correctly, to communicate what I'm mm -hmm. saying. And and that's what the strumming course is designed to do is it's mm -hmm. it does give patterns. Much like when you're learning a foreign language, you kind of learn that phrase of like, mm -hmm. you know, donde es la biblioteca or whatever, you know, it's like <laughs> you learn that and then you learn how these words can be used and changed and yeah. manipulated just like with the rhythm. Mm -hmm. So in that case, yeah, I took the first half. Mm -hmm did that but then i can also think oh it's a two beat pattern what words do i know what rhythms do i know to use that mm -hmm. that's that's kind of the pitfall right that a lot of people get into is that they think oh i use island strum for everything no matter what and so like taking it back to your analogy that's like oh man i really have to use the bathroom uh donde estas biblioteca <laughs> and they're like uh library One, so it, so, it, it yeah, yeah. You, that, you, I think you ahead, get to a point where you have to learn more words. You have to learn a wider vocabulary to express yourself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and on the, the not so basic course, um, how many patterns are there? there I'll, I'll name all the names just because it's kind of fun. <laughs> They're de designed to be phrases, right? Just mm -hmm. like that. And then you can mix and match to create different sounds. But there's the not so basic calypso, the island pattern, rock backbeat, rasta rhythm, indie pattern, Egyptian clave, 1950s pattern, Bluegrass pattern, Western pattern, love song pattern, folk lullaby pattern, mm -hmm. bubblegum pop pattern. That one's for Aldrin. <laughs> Irish jig pattern, disco funk pattern, samba pattern, and the hand jive, hand jive. And all of these, you know, can be written out in this way and create these different sounds. And they're as simple as, you know, going something like this, which is just a nice, you know, rock backbeat pattern to something that may be, you know, a little bit more intricate of. Like all those names are part of like a Casio like sampler. Yeah, that's totally the vibe I was going for too. That's absolutely what I was going for. Yeah, it, it totally. But you know, it, it communicates that that feel, and then you can change it. You can take yeah. those pieces and you know whatever it might be. You know, like this is a cool pattern. This is the hand jive. It's also known as a three-two clave. If I said play a three-two clave, it's like what? Well. You learn this pattern mm -hmm. and you get that sort of sense. It's the I want candy uh, rhythm. But the, the whole point is these rhythms mm -hmm. are designed to be diverse enough to give you a mm -hmm. vocabulary and then shown how you can mix and match mm -hmm. and create mm -hmm. your own patterns. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. What was that so what, question you had, Aldrin? I, got well, I was, I was actually like pertaining to your uh, to your newer course. I was gonna, cause um, cause I was gonna ask if uh, what does the new course contain? Like, if you buy the course, like what is what are you getting? Like in, in that course, you talk about the coding. Like how many videos is it? How long? All that good stuff. Yeah. So basically, uh, it takes you through all the different things you need to know, right, for how to do chord melody arranging. And so mm -hmm. the the beginning of the course is going to be teaching you how to look at a musical staff and look at tablature and equate these things to each other. It's not about, um, you know, memorizing all of this and learning it all as much as it is. Here's your decoder ring, which just shows you all the notes on the musical staff and all the ways to play them on the ukulele. So you can line it up and mm -hmm. write it in place. And so um, it takes you from that very start with how to read tab, read music, and then using the song uh, Amazing Grace, we work through how to create a melody arrangement where you're just playing the melody. Then you go into the basics of some chord melody, and then you do that chord melody with thumb picking style, with finger picking style, and with strumming to kind of teach these different techniques as you go through. So it's adding these sort of layers as you go. And then it also has um, the five foot two, the waltzing Matilda and the um, 
House of the Rising Sun with kind of an added emphasis on the different styles for each one of them to show how you can apply them. And so um, with this, there's also this workbook where you basically can work through these tunes and then you can check how you did it compared to how I do it. And the cool thing about it is there's no right or wrong answer with this. In mm -hmm. fact, I'll, I'll guarantee you all if you said, Aldrin, do a cover of this song in this key, Matt, do a cover of this song in this key, they'll probably be similar because the ukulele, you know, there's only yeah. so many ways we can play notes. But I guarantee you we'll do things differently because we're two different musicians. Yours will be a little different than mine. And the whole point of the course is saying that's okay and starting to look at what it is you're doing, what it is I'm doing, mm -hmm. so that you can start to see those patterns. And then when you look at someone else's chord melody arrangement, you might have a different perspective because now mm -hmm. you understand what they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can see, oh, they put the chord on the third beat of every bar. And I really like that. How could I do this on these arrangements here? Mm -hmm. and, and start to manipulate it and change it. And so it's really designed for anybody who's ever been interested in chord melody, creating their own chord melody to you know get started with it. Um, as far as the amount of, of content, the video count and all that, um, it all the information is there on the website, which I'm pulling up right now. It looks like we have 60 minutes of video with seven lessons in addition to play along videos, slowdowns and the workbooks. Um, so it's a lot of stuff. Ah. And man, Aaron made it look so pretty, everybody. <laughs> like Aaron made it look so good. All the tabs like on screen. Yeah. And then I'll say like, or you could do this and it magically changes to what I'm doing yeah. because Aaron is an absolute wizard. Aaron is like the George Lucas of, uh, of, of ukulele, you know? He, uh, absolutely. Like I, as soon as we launched this course and I saw it all, I was like, Aaron, when are we doing the next thing? Like I'm in, what do you, you know? Do you want to do this once a year, monthly, weekly? I, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> Speaking of Lucas, uh, before we go, explain to us what are midichlorians and what is order 66? <laughs> How much time we got? <laughs> <laughs> Quick answer. Go. Less than 10 words. Less than 10. What are midichlorians? Uh, midichlorians are the life forms that make up the force. Okay. And right. Order 66 is greatest <laughs> coup in Star Wars history. Oh, uh, snap. Wow, well, that's that's controversial, sir. <laughs> I I say taking out the trash is what it is. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I thought we were not getting political. I thought this was a non-political podcast. I'm just joking. Here we are. Let the Empire hate flow, man. Let, let the hate flow within you. <laughs> hate solos, man. <laughs> What? What is? Oh, uh, do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! <laughs> Which episode is the best movie, and why is it episode one? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, so <laughs> episode one's not my least favorite. So that that at least works. Five is definitely the best. I'm sorry. It just it just is. And then this will be the thing that gets me flamed on the internet. My second favorite's three. Yep, I said it. Three. Yep. The the, <laughs> the yeah. Sith. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Like wow. or, it's it's. You mean that I hate you, that one? <laughs> I hate you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unlimited. No. no! Oh my God, I saw that, that movie one? in uh, freshman year of high school that, that came out. And uh, oh. that was like one of the, I was getting so into Star Wars, all the yeah. politics. And that mm -hmm. one just like wrapped it all together. And still has the greatest lightsaber duel ever. So, but, uh, but a close second is episode one. So, Kahai, I mean. What? Darth, Ma Darth Maul, Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan. You're a, you're a Watto fan, and you so. just, it's all about that pod race, baby. <laughs> I, well, the, the pod I'm going to admit, it. <laughs> I, I said episode one to try and egg you on, because I don't like episode one. <laughs> yeah, episode I, one is not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's got some rough edges for sure, but pod racing and Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn make it all, yeah. Honestly, for me, it's, okay, but, it's, it's know, seven. So. It's it's all about somebody who's never used the force or a lightsaber all of a sudden being amazing at it as soon as they touch it. I think that's my favorite I, part. I think the quote that <laughs> the Luke whole gives, franchise. The, Luke, the, the quote Luke gives in The Mandalorian when uh -huh. uh, he picks up Grogu of talent without training is nothing, uh, I think is what I'll, I'll leave leave that. At. Oh, I thought we were being controversial, man. I'm, that's... Not. I'm just saying it's a quote. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so you mean you can't just be perfect with the force, but just by grabbing it first, you know, first my your first contact with a lightsaber, you're not gonna be great at it. You saying that? It it depends on if Disney was a part of it or not. I think, no. but uh, oh. that, that's, that... unless you have Palpatine blood, apparently, right? Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Mandalorian started back up, and we're only feeling happy feelings here. Okay, sounds good. See, we have to dedicate at least five minutes for some, for some actual <laughs> Star Wars and no, no Harry Potter nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got one of those. I go. It's my little Grogu. <laughs> this thing is so dusty. <laughs> oh man! Quick, where's this from? And who is this? Who and what is this I, from? I have no idea what you're looking at. Okay, we're done here, everybody. What we're is done. that? Close it, close it. We're done. What, this what is, is it? I'm it's sorry. a Tonberry from Final Fantasy. Oh, okay. I said Star Wars on the brain, and then you're throwing out, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I like, like, is it going to ride a chocobo or is it not? What uh, are you, what? We're done here. <laughs> Friendship <I'm> over. <laughs> I think the last Final Fantasy game I played to the end was probably Tactics Advance. So, that's oh, yeah? been, it's, been a, it's been a while. I, I like this. It's like, how dare you, nerd? You don't know about my nerdy thing? How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you show us your uh, your your Jar Jar tattoo, Matt? Uh, that is, is this so a G-rated cool. podcast? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, man, episode one's going to come out soon. That guy's going to rule. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Ukulele Ground podcast. Once again, thank you, Matt Dolbert, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Very, very, very important. One last time, throw out your socials. Throw out with, uh, your website where you can... Yeah, um... check out my website, mattukulele.com. You can also find me on YouTube. I think it's just at Matt Dahlberg or at The Jumping Flea pretty much everywhere, too, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, all that nonsense and uh, my patreon page is you know we've got a community of over 500 people that are are on there and uh, it's really fun to see what sort of lessons they want to do and it's really fun making those a reality so check out my patreon page patreon.com slash matt ukulele and uh yeah we'd love to see you there if right, if you're guys, a patron uh, of matt uh spam his patron and ask for like the uh the episode seven or themes from episode seven <laughs> As his, his next lesson. Yeah, just ask him what, I what did kind, like of, seven kind of more wand he got. Nine, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> kind of wand he got from Diagon Alley. It's just a coal wood with phoenix feather. <laughs> and what's the core? Yeah, yeah. Midichlorian core. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, next week, we have the Ukulele Underground Aloha Friday Live Jam. See you then. If you're a UU Plus subscriber, stick around for the uh, live uh, live coaching. We'll see you folks next time. Thank you, Matt. Aloha. <laughs>